at the uh, penguins. Today we're going to 2008B number three. This was on Hardy Weinberg Equilibrium. Evolution is one of the unifying themes of biology. Evolution involves change in the frequency of alleles in the population. For a particular genetic locus in the population, the frequency of the recessive allele is 0.4, and the frequency of the dominant allele is 0.6. What is the frequency of each genotype in this population? So first we have to think about what do these, um, what is the formula for these? Um, so AA is just your P squared, um, A little a or your heterozygous is your 2PQ, and then homozygous recessive is your Q squared. Because if you remember, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. So after this, we'll sub in what we know. So we know that capital A is 0.6. So P would be 0.6. So 0 0.6 squared is 0.36. Since I already know P is 0.6 and I know that Q is 0.4, I can sub those in. So 2 times 0.6 times 0.4 gives me 0.48. And then I know that my Q squared, I'm sorry, my Q is 0.4. So my Q squared is going to be 0.16. Um, and so the last part of the question says, what is the frequency of the dominant phenotype? Dominant phenotype is going to be those that are homozygous dominant and those that are heterozygous. So if I add those together, I'm going to find the frequency of the dominant phenotype, which would be 0.36 plus 0.48, which gives us 0.84. Um, and then there is, of course, our scoring guidelines. So the student says, frequency of the genotype AA, or homozygous dominant genotype, is expressed as P squared in the Hardy-Weinberg equation. The frequency of AA is 36%. The frequency of the genotype heterozygous is expressed 2PQ is 48%. The frequency of the genotype homozygous recessive is expressed as Q squared and is 16%. The frequency of the dominant phenotype is found by adding P squared with 2PQ. The frequency of this phenotype is 84%. So next it says, how can the Hardy-Weinberg principle of genetic equilibrium be used to determine whether this population is evolving? So Hardy-Weinberg states five things. So there's these five conditions. And if you haven't looked at Paul Anders' video of the five fingers of evolution, I would highly recommend going to that. So what he says is that you've got to have a large population size. So the image is actually the opposite of what I'm about to say. Um, but you need there to be an extremely large population size. You need there to be non-random mating. Okay. Um, so... The, the thing is, is that I need to make sure that they are, they're mating with each other um, and that it's not based on any type of sexual selection. You want there to be no mutations. You want there to be no gene flow. So you don't want any new alleles um, coming into your population or leaving your population. And you don't want any traits to be more favorable or less favorable. So that's no natural selection. So if you meet these five conditions, then of course your little frequencies won't change. Um, and so then you could just describe a way to measure this. You would find the P's and Q's or the frequency of the allele at one generation, and then you would find it again come generations later. So student says frequency results found above by both genetic and phenotypic frequencies are of a certain population under conditions. The same population can be tested with the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation at different time or under different conditions. Then the results, both genotypic and phenotypic frequencies can be compared and observed to see if there is a change or indication that the population is evolving. So part C says identify an environmental change and describe how it might alter allele frequencies in that population. Explain which condition of Hardy-Weinberg principle would not be met. So this is just asking you to come up with a change and then describe how that change um, alters the frequencies and then which of those five conditions isn't being met. So as long as you give them, you identify that change, you give them the explanation of how the allele frequency changes, and then also talk about that condition, you can get points here. So the student says, if the land where a population of cows lived was experiencing a severe drought, a good portion of the population might migrate to find more fertile land and therefore more food. This migration would result in a loss of the specific allele, altering the allele frequencies in the remaining population. The Hardy-Weinberg principle of no migration would not be met in this example. So I hope that was helpful. Remember, H5A was just assessed by all.